going on everybody? Mal here. How are you guys doing today? Last time we talked about Emoto Rule 1 foam, we looked at the action. It was supposed to be a GoPro strapped to its back, but it couldn't stabilize footage to save its life. So to my eyes, it missed the mark that it was, you know, setting out to hit. And today we're looking at the Motorola One Macro. All about macro photography, but unfortunately it also does the same thing. So different phone, same story. Now the one kind of saving grace or maybe like attenuating factor is the action. It cost 350 bucks back then. Granted now it's back down to 250 basically. But this costs $160. So it's not necessarily a phone that you would expect to really shine in everything it does but since it has a laser autofocus on the back i did hope at least focus wouldn't be a problem with the macro shooter but in reality it is which is a little bit sad but either way everything coming out of the cameras on this phone is blowing out the highlights crushing the blacks way too much contrast not enough detail and everything looks a little bit washed out and the macro camera hunts for focus like crazy any changes in the environmental lighting, either on the foreground, background, anything it detects that thinks it's movement, it doesn't matter. It hunts for focus so often that it's going to be an exercise to get good in focus macro shots with this thing. But when you do, they're cool. So if you want to at least have the option to play around with a macro camera, this does the job. It delivers. Now, everything else about the phone is a step down from the action. Like the internals, there's a slower processor, less RAM, so everything is a little bit more sluggish, meaning that within, what, a two-year range maximum, you're probably going to have to trade this in because it's not going to be getting updates and it's not going to be as relevant or as snappy anymore. Well, it's not snappy now, so it's going to be even worse, but you get what I'm saying. The display is the same one as in the action, as far as I can tell. So colorful flat display that's not that bright. So in direct sunlight outside, it is going to be a problem to look at it. And the build is basically what Motorola has perfected with this lineup. It's plastic on the back with this dual tone sort of look, hence the lighting on the background. Never mind. A fingerprint scanners on the back does what it's supposed to. Comes with a 10 watt fast charger in the box and there's a 4000 milliamp power battery in this thing, which gets you to two, three day territory easily since the internals don't suck up too much juice either way. Okay, so if you need a phone right now and you cannot go above what 160 plus tax, maybe 180 bucks, this is not an unusable phone and it's definitely not a bad choice. It's not gonna outperform or do anything drastically better or different than any other phone from other brands in this price range, but there you go. The macro is okay. My problem is Motorola's strategy on the one lineup overall, because each phone is supposed to cater to one specific thing. There was the GoPro nut, there's the macro lens, there's the zoom one, there's the one that records stuff in 21 by nine, and there's a new one coming out that's supposed to be like focus on super high resolution photos and videos with the, at least photos, with the main shooter on the phone. And I absolutely know for a fact that that phone is coming out because of the rest of the competition. Because it's gonna come out at 250 to 300 bucks, trying to get Motorola not to lose too much market for stuff like the lower entry level devices from Samsung, Xiaomi, Huawei, Google, which granted is not available everywhere, so it's not like a global threat, but it's still a threat on the markets that the Pixel 3a lineup is and soon to be 4a as well. And now even Apple. Yes. This, the iPhone SE 2020, uh, this is an iPhone 7, you can see because the Apple logo is still upwards, uh, it's, the camera's busted. This costs $399, so comparing to the macro is like over twice the price. But if you compare it to the Hyper for $250 to $300, it's way closer. So Motorola has to nail this thing with the high-res camera. Because if they don't, they're not going to be able to compete with the performance of the cameras of both the iPhone SE and the, three, and the Pixel A lineup. And by the way, if Motorola actually nails this, it's going to be super interesting to see how the new One Hyper compares to the $999 flagship, the Edge Plus. They just got out with 108 megapixels on the main shooter. That's a video I'm definitely going to try to put in the works, but it's going to have to be for later. Now, coming back to this whole competition thing, what concerns me for Motorola is that this strategy has been working for them, but I'm not really sure for how long they're going to be able to keep it up because it's not about only camera performance anymore. 
these other phones from the other brands coming down to this level of the market are bringing internals that are going to keep those phones being updated and staying relevant and feeling snappy and more powerful and you know delivering a more entertaining and more fulfilling enjoyable experience for longer so the new 2020 SE is probably going to be a good phone for what four five six years maybe while a phone like this is going to have to be traded in in what two in the long run, it means this costs more upfront, but you're gonna be spending as much as or more on this route. Put that all together and the most likely scenario is if your budget absolutely cannot allow, then yes, phones like this are gonna be a good choice. Go for them. Just get your expectation down and understand what you're gonna be getting. But if you have at least some chance to stretch your budget a little bit, run the numbers, and try to see if you can go for a phone that's gonna add a little bit of longevity and deliver that more satisfying experience for you to actually use it during that period. And it doesn't have to be the new 2020 SE. If you don't like Apple, you don't want an iPhone or you just want something in a different form factor, it's just a matter of you guys doing a little bit of more research and you're definitely gonna find something that can deliver those two things and you know bring in everything that you need for the budget that you can afford. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, so leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual if you're feeling like it. Check out all the other content we've got going on and stay tuned because I really missed talking tech with you guys since this whole pandemic thing started. It's It's been a little rough, but I hope you guys are staying safe, staying inside, keeping healthy. Look after yourselves and your families. We're all going to get through this and I'll catch you guys in a couple of days.